was on this mountain, and uh, on this mountain, a cloud covers the mountain, and the Bible calls that cloud heaven. And Moses is right here somewhere in the heavens, and he sees a tabernacle. In other words, a dwelling place of Almighty God. And God says to him, Moses, make sure that you build everything exactly as you saw it on the mountain in heaven. If you read Hebrews chapter 8, 9, and 10. So Moses, make sure that when you come down this mountain, go build a tabernacle. But make sure it's according to the pattern you saw in heaven. So when Moses came down from the mountain, his face shone with glory. And he had to put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not behold his face. Okay, so the elders as well as Joshua warned him and said, Moses, you are shining. There's too much glory. Where did he get the glory? On the mountain. What was on the mountain? A cloud. What was in the cloud? The heavens. What was manifesting there? The dwelling place of God. What did Moses see? God in all his glory. How did he come down? With glory. What did he have to do? He had to put a veil over his face. In Acts chapter 7, when Stephen was stoned, he was talking more or less about Moses and all these experiences. He said, when Moses on the mountain received the living oracles. The living oracles. Okay? Living oracles. In other words, he refers to more or less, uh, I would say, Exodus chapter 19. Now, in Exodus chapter 19, God said to Moses, go down, I'm going to come down on the mountain, there's going to be fire, there's going to be smoke, there's going to be earthquakes, and go tell the people, they are a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Tell them they are a holy nation. Tell them they are a peculiar people. Okay? This is what God said in Exodus 19 before he gave the law in Exodus 20. So in Exodus 19, there was no mention of the law. There was mentioning of you're going to be a royal priesthood. You're going to be a holy nation. You're going to be a peculiar people. You're going to be above all people on the face of the earth. Now, not one of those things ever came to pass in the life of the children of Israel. They all died, and they never got these promises. Okay? So keep that in mind. They, God gave Moses living oracles. He didn't give him a dead letter. Okay? Now, the Bible says, the law kills Okay? The letter kills. Jesus says the same thing in John 60, 63. He says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The letter killeth. And he was talking about giving his body as flesh that we must eat. And he says, that the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. But the letter kills. Referring to the law of Moses can only kill. Remember the woman caught in the act of adultery in John chapter 8. They said, the law of Moses says, kill her. Stone her. But what do you say? Remember, and Jesus says, the one without sin caused the first stone. And then Jesus said, woman, where are the accusers? I don't accuse you. Okay, so with that in mind. With that in mind. Listen to the song. For you, O Lord, are good. You are ready to forgive our trespasses. To sending them away. To letting them go completely and forever. Amen. You are abundant in mercy and loving kindness to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to the cry of my supplication. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you and you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord. Neither are there works like unto yours. 
Oh God, you are good, you are merciful, ready to forgive our sins, sending them away, letting them go completely. In other words, God wants to let your sin go completely. Not you. God wants to let your sins go completely. Not you. I know you've desired it. But how many times does it still loom up in front of you? This Bible says God will let your sin go completely. God will let it be gone forever and never let it come back again. Now let's listen to Brother Moses. He's sending out 12 spies to go spy the land that God has promised them. They come back, 10 says, eh, the land is good, just like you said, but apart from all the good things, we saw giants. So because of what we saw, this is our estimation of ourselves. We have a perception, we are grasshoppers. So cut it out, Moses, we're not going. Two guys stood up and said, hey, God said we can take the land. So we don't care about giants. We don't care about, if God said we can take it, let's go take it. God got so angry, he said, Moses, why don't you let me go? I'm going to kill all these guys. Then I'll start a new nation and you're going to be the greatest. Now listen to Moses, Numbers chapter 14. Moses says, Oh God, have you not spoken to me on the mountain? Have you not said that you are good? Have you not said that you are full of mercy? Have you not said that you are quick to forgive? Have you not said that you are slow to anger? In other words, this must have been somewhere with the living oracles. Hmm? He says, so if you kill them, you are canceling what you said. God says, Moses, at your word, I'm not going to kill them. And as sure as I live, this earth shall be filled with my glory. Numbers 14, verses 18 through 21. So 2 Corinthians 3. Verse 5 says, Not that we are fit or qualified and sufficient in ability of ourselves to form personal judgments Or to claim or count anything as coming from us. Remember Romans 11. But our power and ability and sufficiency are from God. Verse 6. Pay close attention. It is he who has qualified us. Making us to be fit and worthy. And sufficient as ministers and dispensers of a new covenant of salvation through Christ. Not ministers of the letter of a legally written code, but of the spirit. For the code of the law kills, but the Holy Spirit makes alive. Now, the rest of the chapter goes on how Moses was on the mountain, how he got the oracles, how he came down, his face shone with glory. And it says, if there was so much glory when Moses got this law, how much more glory must we have who now have the New Testament, who are now ministers of the Spirit, not of the letter? How much more glory? Then he says, the veil stays over the faces of the people, making them blinded. It's all there in the chapter. Their faces are veiled, blinding them to the truths of the word of God as long as they read the law, the legal 
written code. The law. So as long as they abide to that legal written code, their faces are veiled, they are blinded, they cannot see. He says, but the veil is removed when they turn to the Lord, and the Lord is the Spirit. He says, then, as our faces are now open, in other words, the veil is gone. No more veil. Our faces are open. We turn. Then we behold like in a mirror in the word of God, the face of Jesus. We are changed from the glory that Moses had on the mountain to the glory that Christ came to bring us in the new. That was the letter. Okay. So we have the letter. It kills, it's the law, it's death, it's a legal written code, and it was given by Moses. But it had glory. How much more the spirit, which is, which is the new, which is life. Which is in Christ. Amen. Which is greater glory. Now, I trust that you see, he who has qualified us. And made us fit. To be ministers of the new. The Spirit. Now, you are fit and qualified, not out of yourself. Because it's not how much you want to get rid of sin, it's how He already prophesied He will forgive you, send your sin away, completely take it out of the way, send it so far away that you will never find it again. Look at 2 Corinthians 3 verse 14. He says, Their minds were blinded. For until this day remain the same veil. Untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. But the veil is done away in Christ. In other words, what blinds the minds? The law blinds the minds. The law blinds the minds. Hmm? Hang on, sister. Now, chapter 4 says, seeing that we have this ministry. Which ministry? Chapter 3, verse 6. We are qualified and fit. Okay. Verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Listen. Listen. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. If the law blinds the minds, we just read it. Then he goes on to say, the God of this world, blinds minds so who's the God of this world just hang on just hang on the context is law and grace the context is letter and spirit the context is kill and alive the context is Moses and Christ Okay, the context, Satan is not mentioned. This is not devil and God. This is law and grace. This is Christ and Moses. This is old and new. Satan is not talked about. The devil is not mentioned. 
He's talking about something is blinding the minds of the, the people that they can't see and he's calling it the law. He says, so their minds are blinded by the God of this world so that the light of God cannot shine on them. Which is the image of God. Is that more or less in short? Verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. In other words, it is again light versus darkness. Okay. To get the context right, it's spirit versus letter. To get the context right, it's life versus death. To get the context right, it's Christ versus Moses. This is what we are dealing with right now. Okay? So, back to Exodus 19. Moses, on the third day, I'm going to come down on the mountain. There's going to be glory. Go tell the people they shall be to me a peculiar people. A kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Hmm? But then God said, but they will not take the word. In the same chapter, he says, they will not believe it. Hmm? So, 1 Peter chapter 2. Just listen. Verse 7, 8, and 9. You can start with verse 1. He says, we must let ourselves being bold up a holy uh, sanctuary to offer up sacrifices and stuff like that. He says, for you are a holy nation, a peculiar people. A royal priesthood. And he has called you. Out of darkness. You must listen tonight. Into his marvelous light. To show forth the praises. Of him who has called. He has called you out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. Now our concept would be. He took you from the devil to God. He took you from hell to heaven. He took you from sin to righteousness. But the context of First Peter 2 with Exodus 19, with Second Corinthians 3 and 4, has got nothing to do with the devil or darkness of Satan. It's got to do with a blinding darkness in minds of people because of the law of Moses that kills but he came to bring us a new to qualify us to set us free to set us in motion to bring us a total new agreement so let's go to Colossians maybe let's start with verse 11 we pray that you may be invigorated rated and strengthened with all power according to the might of his glory to exercise every kind of endurance and patience, perseverance and forbearance with joy. Now here it comes, here it comes. You have listened up to now. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit. Wait till we read. To share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints in the light. Verse 13. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us 
into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have our redemption through His blood, which means the forgiveness of our sins. Now He is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. The devil has been dealt with. And we're going to see it in a moment from now. So he is not your real problem. Your problem is law things. Judgment. Condemnation. Unworthiness. Feeling guilty. Feeling accused. Feeling abused. Feeling unaccepted. Feeling rejected. I wish I can get somebody to preach. That's all law stuff. Not the devil. Law. Listen to verse 21. And although you at one time were estranged and alienated from him and were of hostile attitude of mind in your wicked activities, yet now has Christ the Messiah reconciled you to God in the body of his flesh through death in order to present you holy faultless irreproachable in the father's presence is there anybody in this house that can say my goodness what a god what a love did you see this again and again, and again, and all to do with the law. And that makes you in darkness. Your minds. How many people in their minds sit in darkness? They just can't see. 2,000 years ago, we had Sadducees. Pharisees. Now we have wooden seas, couldn't seas, cannot seas, will not seas. Because it's easier to come into judgment and condemnation to live in the freedom. The Father has qualified us, made us holy, acceptable. Forgiven us through the body of his son on the cross. Amen. Keep your finger there. Let's jump to Hebrews 8, 9, and 10. Just read some selected verses maybe. Verse 12, chapter 8. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Verse 8, the Holy Spirit points out that the way into the true holy of holies is not yet thrown open as long as the former tabernacle remains a recognized institution. Hey, you switch your TV on. 99% of Christian broadcasts recognize the old institution. They want to rebuild the temple of Solomon. They want to have again the ark. Of the covenant. They want again the rituals of Israel that Jesus already finished. An abomination in the sight of the Most High God, slapping the crucified Christ in his face, say, Come down from the cross. We don't accept the price you paid. We want to go back to rituals and laws and judgment. 
and physical cities instead of realizing we are the city. We are the people. We are the new Jerusalem. Verse 11. But the appointed time came when Christ appeared as high priest of better things that have come and are to come through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, and it's not part of the material creation. He went once for all into the holy of holies of heaven, not by the virtue of blood and goats, or to, but by his own blood, having found, listen, and secured a complete redemption, an everlasting release for us. Mm. 24 for Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands which are figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God appear appear nor yet should he offer himself often as the high priest does with blood for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 14, chapter 10. For by a single offering, he has forever completely cleansed and perfected those who are consecrated and made holy. Back to Colossians. Chapter 2. And you who were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, your sinful carnal nature, God brought to life together with Christ, having freely forgiven us all our transgressions. 